Welcome back Deep Your View TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from DeepYourView.com and today we're looking at the brand new Canon EOS RP. But we've also got a really cool place to shoot it and I want to show it to you here. This is brand new in Calgary. This is the rec room. It's this amazing center where of course you're going to see lots of video games today, restaurant, bar. This place has it all and why I'm bringing you here to me, the Canon EOS RP is giving you very affordable full frame capability. It's great for going to places like this, shoot in these low light situations. I think this camera is going to do well, so it should be fun. Now, I should also mention Jordan's shooting on an EOS RP as well. We're testing the preamp. You're going to get a lot of loud music for sure, a lot of crazy sounds. And uh, he's also going to be testing a lot of different frame rates and resolutions, so keep a, a, an eye out for those changes. So right off the bat, one of the things I actually really like about the RP, it's the body design. It's very light, it is polycarbonate plastic, very reminiscent of a Rebel body or an EOS M50 kind of series camera. The grip is fantastic. Canon really know how to make a grip that fits my hands. I also noticed the new dials. They're metal. I like that we have two control dials. And speaking of things that I think Canon does really well, I've always said it about their cameras, but the interface and ergonomics are excellent. The autofocus on button's in a great spot. Nothing feels crowded. I love the articulating screen. And of course, Canon has always known how to do good touchscreen interfaces. So overall, I'm very pleased with the way the EOS RP is able to be customized. I like the way it handles and I like the way it feels. And the only loss really is weather sealing. That's not something the target audience is really gonna care about anyways, and it makes sense for the price point. So the EVF on the back of the RP, it's not gonna win any awards, it's not gonna blow anyone away, but you know, it's a, a fairly large size. I get pretty good eye relief for it. My nose is touching a little bit, it's not too bad. Decent magnification. At 2.36 million dots, you're gonna see some pixelation if you look for it, but it's all to be expected. I mean, keep in mind that there are some cameras on the market that are more expensive and have the same kind of EVF. But you've also got EVFs like the X-T30, which give you 100 frames per second as an option for the refresh rate. This will be stuck at 60. Still, considering the price point, I have no complaints about it. When it comes to battery life, we've got good and bad news, and I'll start with the bad. SEPA rating on the LP17, 250 shots. It's not great, especially compared to a lot of the other cameras out there, which are also pushing 300, and I still wouldn't consider great. So it means an extra battery is gonna be a must. You know, if you're shooting very casually, you might get away with it, but really, I'd feel uncomfortable having only one or two batteries. And the good news, I can charge this camera through USB-C. I can even use a power bank. I mean, that's a nice option if you wanna carry it around. Uh, and I guess if you're an existing Rebel user, that already has LP17 batteries, you're gonna be pretty happy with your upgrade, but otherwise, plan to spend some money on some extra batteries. So the EOS R had this really thoughtful design feature. When you turn the camera off, the shutter stays closed, keeps a lot of sensor dust off. I thought that was a really smart idea, and I expected to see it on the RP, but it's not there. And that seems pretty disappointing. I mean, I don't know if it's something that's difficult to engineer, but logically, it doesn't seem like it should be. So maybe it is just a cost-cutting, you know, pay-to-play kind of feature. All right, now at the heart of the Canon EOS RP, you are getting a full-frame 26-megapixel sensor. It's not quite the same as the 6D Mark II, but it's very similar. For all intents and purposes, we're seeing effectively the same image quality. That's got some good points and bad points that I want to talk about, but check out deepyourview.com. Look at the sample galleries and the test samples you can see for yourself. So the big plus side here, for an enthusiast getting into this camera, you're now getting good full-frame high ISO performance. And that's one of the main reasons we want to upgrade to a full-frame sensor. That's why it's so good here at the rec room. It gives us a really nice image quality in JPEGs or in RAW for shooting at high ISO, which we're going to need to do in these low light conditions. All right, so it's time to talk about dynamic range, but oh, do we have a, oh, we've got a problem with dynamic range? All right, sorry about that little blip, but Jordan's now telling me that this plain gray background is something that the Canon EOS RP can handle when it comes to dynamic range. I know that seems mean, but the fact is, that is the main weakness of this camera. It does not have the same capability to push shadows than the other cameras do in RAW format. 
I mean, we're talking about some older cameras like the a7 II, for example, and even a lot of APS-C cameras will outperform this camera when you push shadows. What does that all mean for you, the photographer? If you wanna push your shadows on the RP, you're gonna find more noise than other manufacturers give you. That means that if you shoot lower ISO shots, sunrise, sunset, landscapes, you know, architecture, things where you really have to deal with bright highlights and dark shadows, this camera is going to be disappointing compared to a lot of other cameras on the market. At higher ISOs, this camera is fairly competitive, but at low ISOs, it's going to be a weakness. And so if you're the kind of photographer who wants to really play with raw files, shoot a lot of contrasty light and push those safely, this is not the camera for you. But considering the price point, if you're more of an enthusiast who just wants to shoot, maybe deal with a little bit of pushing and pulling or stick to lit scenes or lighting, which is far more uh, easy to shoot contrast, this camera is gonna do a great job. And frankly, this price point, if you're a JPEG shooter, the Canons shoot beautiful JPEGs, nice color, nice skin tones. You can't push and pull JPEGs anyways. So if that's you, the RP's in your market. Now, of course, today we're shooting in a fairly low light situation. I've been overall fairly impressed with the camera's ability to focus in low light. I, I find it's not really hunting too much. I'm not having to wait for it to acquire targets, doing a pretty good job. Canon does claim that it'll focus down to minus five EV, but that is only with bright 1.2 lenses like this 50 mil on here. And honestly, Yes, you could feasibly put these two together like I have, but I don't think it really makes sense that a lot of people are also gonna go out and buy 1.2 glass, which is more than twice as expensive as the body alone. Now, of course, it also has really good high ISO performance as well with the sensor. That is a strength of the camera. However, you are gonna need to crank that ISO up higher. In here, I'm often shooting 3200, 6400, or 12,800, and that's because I've got no IBIS on this camera. I only have image stabilization on some of the lenses, and therefore it's not as stable a platform. I have to get that shutter speed faster. I still think that if you didn't need to weather sealing or you weren't worried about you know, extreme cold weather and that poor battery life as a problem, this would actually make a pretty decent lightweight astrophotography camera. But again, in that situation, you're gonna need bright lenses to maximize that light gathering. That is gonna make the package more expensive. So the Canon EOS RP has a cute little feature here. It's a focus stacking feature, nice and easy. You basically set how many shots you want it to take, throw it on a tripod, tell it how wide a spread you want to cover, and it will shoot a whole bunch of photos, and then you can stack them with Canon software and post afterwards. I'm sorry, did I mention how much I actually like the interface on this camera? It's just so nice that you can change anything very easily. I could use the quick menu and bring up stuff. I could just touch on the screen and change a value. I can go in the menu, classic sense. I can even set up the manual function button here at the top to be a dial-based quick menu. And remember that a lot of RF lenses have a customizable dial here on the front as well. If you find the grip's too small, your pinky's going under, you can buy some additional grip extensions so that you get a larger purchase on the camera. I can even lock the rear dial if I want to disable it. And although it is a cost-cutting feature, it's one that I really like, they got rid of that damn function bar on the back that was on the EOS R. I hated that thing, I'm glad it's gone. So in this whole new pupil eye detect autofocus kind of game that everybody's playing, Canon had a disadvantage because it only worked in single autofocus up to this point. It was great for stationary subjects, but if they started moving, you're out of luck. So I was really excited to actually play with EOS RPs, autofocus with eye detect and pupil detect in continuous. Now, from the testing that we've done, it actually works very well. And not only that, it's actually quite easy to implement and use. So it'll pick up a face, it'll go to the eye once it sees an eye, and it will then transition automatically into tracking autofocus, for example worked really well, I can touch the screen or I can put a center point on the screen and it tracks actually really nicely as you can see in the test here. And there's only a couple downsides. First one, your subject can't be too far away. I mean, it'll go to tracking autofocus, but it won't pick up faces and eyes from a long distance like some of the other manufacturers. Not a big downside. The real issue for me is that we've only got a two and a half frame per second shooting rate continuous with this tracking autofocus working. And while it's taking pictures, you get a substantial blackout time. So if your subject's moving quickly, it can be pretty hard to follow them. That is a disadvantage. I mean, that's gonna mean that this camera is good for portraiture, not really great for sports and action. And I feel that we should still at this day and age have something a little bit faster and easier to use. But the continuous autofocus eye detect tracking autofocus, that is substantially improved. And that's a really good thing, especially at this price point. So I really hope to see that get implemented on some future cannons. Hey everyone, it's Jordan to talk about video on the RP, which I used to shoot the episode, 
And initially looking at it, you might think, hey, this is a killer run and gun vlog camera. We've got a mic jack, a headphone jack. We've got Canon's excellent dual pixel autofocus, but only if you're shooting 30 and 60 frames per second, there's no option for 24 frames per second, 1080. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you might be like, hey, I like shooting 24, I'll just shoot it in 4K. If you shoot in 4K, you only have 24 frames per second now. Also, you've got an APS-C crop on your sensor, you lose dual pixel autofocus, and you've got some of the worst rolling shutter I've seen in a camera. It's a huge sacrifice. I mean, I guess you can make some stuff work with 8-bit, but unfortunately, that's gonna be your only option even if you hook this to an external recorder. It's still gonna be an 8-bit 422 signal where the bigger EOS are, gave you access to 10-bit, gives you access to C-Log. The R is a much better video camera than this. It's a frustrating video camera, and honestly, I can't recommend it when there's killer cameras like the X-T30 or the Panasonic G85 at a lower price point. So normally when we do these reviews, we take a hard look at specifications and comparisons and value for dollar and all that kind of stuff. And if you look at the specs on the EOS RP, it is somewhat disappointing, no doubt about it. And I think if you're more of an enthusiast professional photographer, this is probably not the camera for you. However, we do have to consider the target audience that this camera is aimed at. The amateur, the beginner, uh, you know, somebody who wants the full frame look, but they still want a camera that's very simple. But the other thing you have to really consider is the low cost here. Here. Although Canon's price point on this camera is absolutely commendable, the problem is in the RF lens mount, we don't have that many affordable choices. I mean, really, you're looking at the 35 millimeter as an option that's fairly affordable. You can get this camera with an EF 24 to 105 STM. It's a slower 3.5 to 5.6. You have to use an adapter. You're not even in the RF lens mount anymore. Or you can get the kit with the 24 105 F4L. It's a great lens, but now we're kind of getting away from that affordable price point again. And I don't think Canon's gonna have anything slated until at least 2020, so we're still lacking a lot of affordable lens options. Now let's say you have a whole bunch of VF lenses and you're thinking of maybe moving over to mirrorless. That could be an option, but if you take, for example, uh, an enthusiast using a 6D Mark II with lenses, is there much reason to move over to an EOS RP? You're not really saving that much space. You're basically getting the same image quality. You're getting worse blackout time, worse battery life. I don't know if that's really gonna be a great way to go. So you gotta factor all that in into whether this EOS RP is gonna be a good purchase for you. I do wanna also say special thanks to the rec room and its staff. They were fantastic, accommodating. Jordan and I had a lot of fun playing video games and uh, it was a really cool place to test. So thank you so much for letting us do that. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, check out our Instagram feeds, our Twitter feeds, let us know in the comments Comments below what you think and until next time with another exciting camera, we'll see you very soon.